Hello, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, a channel bringing you player focused discussions and character guides for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. My name is Josh, thank you for watching. The Clockwork Soul Sorcerer aims to put the power of order in the hands of players. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer's key features, discuss ways you can use the theme of the subclass to develop your character, provide some ways you can reflavor the subclass, and give you some ideas on how you can play the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer in the official 5th edition settings. But before we get started, I just wanted to mention that I'm now doing weekly live streams. Every Friday night at 8pm Pacific Time, I will be doing a live stream talking about the latest news in Dungeons & Dragons, playing D&D inspired video games, or collaborating with you on homebrew to take into your games. Again, you can join me every Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time. With that said, let's get started. The first key feature for the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer expands a class's spell list with Clockwork Magic. Many of the spells on this list are supportive like Protection from Evil and Good, Lesser Restoration, and Freedom of Movement. They are geared towards removing status conditions that may hinder yourself or your team in or out of combat. Summon Construct is the only spell on this list that hints at the machine flavor of the subclass. The rest of the spells on this list exemplify the theme of order. Just like the Aberrant Mind Sorcerer, the expanded spell list for the Clockwork Soul addresses the issue the D&D community had about the Sorcerer class. Not only do we get additional spells, but we can also switch those spells with Abjuration or Transmutation spells from the Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard spell list whenever we level into the class. There are no offensive options on this list, which suggests that the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer will be a supportive caster in the party. The next key feature will let us manipulate the dice a bit differently than what we are used to. With Restore Balance, we can use our reaction to remove the advantage or disadvantage on any d20 roll from a creature we can see within 60 feet of us. We can use this feature a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus, and all uses recharge after a long rest. This feature may seem very niche, but can be quite powerful under the right circumstances. It is another supportive ability that will help limit probability. Against our enemies, this will limit their chance to land a successful attack, and for our allies, this increases their chance to succeed by removing the increased chance of failure. Despite the narrow circumstance in which we can use this feature, it is still solid and does a great job of exhibiting the order theme of the subclass. The last key feature introduces another way to spend our sorcery points in a protective manner. With Bastion of Law, we can use an action and spend up to 5 sorcery points to create a magical ward around ourselves or another creature we can see within 30 feet of us. The creature affected by the ward has a number of d8s equal to the number of sorcery points we spent. They can cash in those d8s whenever they take damage by rolling any amount of dice they have and reduce the damage taken by the total rolled. The ward lasts until we finish a long rest or we use the feature again. This feature is purely defensive and takes a bit of pre-planning to make the most use out of it. The perfect targets for this feature will be the party frontliners, as they will be the target of most of the enemy attacks. There could be a few instances where we can put this on some of our squishier teammates if they manage to find themselves in a rough spot. This does use our sorcery points, which could take away from our meta magic abilities, so it is something we need to be mindful of. As I've mentioned a couple of times already, the theme for this subclass is order. Many of the abilities have the sorcerer restoring order by removing harmful status effects like many of the spells in the clockwork magic feature, or by removing the increased likelihood of success or failure with the restore balance feature. Being a clockwork soul sorcerer is not necessarily about being a robot or having machine-like traits, and is instead about implementing structure in areas of chaos. This drive to implement lawful order is why the designers have tied the subclass to the plane of Mechanus. Mechanus is a lawful neutral plane made up of an infinite number of interlocking gears that are the size of land masses. Each creature that exists in Mechanus understands its place in society, and instead of following individualist ideals, they look to fill their role so that the collective whole can achieve a perfect society. There are a few ways we can incorporate these ideas into our character's personality and actions. Let's get the easy one out of the way. For those that want to lean into the machine-like aspect of the subclass and roleplay the Mechanus connection, consider playing as a Warforged, or if possible, use the Anvil Rot Supernatural Gift from Mythic Odysseys of Theros. To incorporate the theme into your character, here are some quirks you can consider. Make them organized. If someone were to look into their traveling bag, everything has a place and is neatly arranged. Have the character maintain a daily routine. Maybe they have a watch or other way to tell time so they can stay on schedule with this routine. The character could be a great mediator in party conflict. They have the ability to listen to both sides of the argument and help resolve the issue. And the last quirk, your character has a respect for the law and is not above reminding your teammates when they break them. This doesn't mean that you need to play them as lawful stupid. They could be aware of the law in order to protect the group from unwanted conflict. Consider the city watch or the sage bag background to show that your character has knowledge of the law. Also consider using the clan crafter, guild artisan, or guild merchant backgrounds as they are a fun way to show your character having a routine or organizational skills. Much of the flavor of the subclass is tied to order and to some extent mechanics. 
In some settings, there is no plane like Mechanus where the sorcerer can draw the power from. In cases like this, the connection to order remains, but the source of where magic is drawn will change the flavor of the subclass. One of the sources of order in this setting could very well be the divine. Celestials or gods of order could be the very source that powers your magic. Maybe you are an offspring of a god of order or one of their celestial followers. Instead of having your character influenced by modrons or other constructs, your character will have embellishments and symbols of the god in your setting. Consider playing the ACMR lineage or picking up the magic initiate feat choosing the cleric subclass to show your character having a touch of the divine. Another way to change the source of order is inspired by the Ravnica setting. You are powered by law binding magic. In Ravnica this takes the form of the guild pact and is used by the Azoria senate to create laws using magic that the citizens abide by. This idea could be taken into a grander scale. The law binding magic could be integral to the creation of the campaign setting. Your character could draw their power from the primordial magic that gave the universe order. Consider using the acolyte, city watch, or sage backgrounds to show that your character understands and either creates or enforces the law. Now let's take a look at how we can play the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer in the official 5th edition settings. In Forgotten Realms, we can be a former clockmaker's apprentice who came into contact by a strange clock left behind by their master. In Eberron, we can be an Asimar that was born in a Davni Manifest Zone. With a divine purpose, they travel throughout Corvair with a goal to restore order to a broken nation. In Ravnica, we can be an Azorius Law Mage who seeks to bring to justice those that threaten the existence of the Guild Pact. And finally in Theros, we could be a champion of Clothis who is tasked with hunting down mortals who attempt to change their fate. Just like many of the other classes in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer is another attempt by Wizards to have a piece of D&D's lore infused into a subclass. While the subclass succeeds at making a player feel like an agent of order, it fails at delivering the construct flavor the name of the subclass makes it seem like it would be. In fact, the only ability that even hints at this is the Summon Construct spell on the expanded spell list. I don't find it that big of an issue as the flavor of the features allows the subclass to fit into a variety of settings despite the name. For players looking for a sorcerer with some offensive power, they will be let down as none of the features in the subclass offer any offensive power boost. One of the things I love about this subclass is the expanded spell list design. Both the Clockwork Soul and Aberrant Mind Sorcerers manage to address the perceived issue the community has with the spell list and still make it flexible. I hope they continue this approach going forward for future sorcerer subclasses. Restore Balance has the potential to be a strong ability but is entirely dependent on how often your DM will enforce advantage or disadvantage. Bastion of Law rounds out our support abilities offering a different take on a protective shield. The potential issue though is that this feature is fueled by our sorcery points which could take away from our metamagic abilities. Even then, it still manages to provide a nice buffer to hit points that also happens to stack with temporary hit points. If you're looking to play a supportive caster but interact with your spells in a different way, the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer might just be what you're looking for. With that said, I want to hear from you. What do you think of the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer? Let me know down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, I drop a video every week, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're looking to play a spellcaster powered by psionics and creatures from the beyond, check out my video on the Aberrant Mind Sorcerer. You can click on the video on the screen to see the new features the subclass can bring to your table and how you can fit it into the official 5th edition settings. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.